Jak jakby się wracały, to teraz by się jeszcze okazuje, że jakiś wypadek jest od tych samotów, które mogą siać. Ale to jakby coś się sprawdzało się po prostu, żeby się nie bagawały niepotrzebnie na ziemi. Dobra? Już pa, pa. No jak tam tak się skończy? Ok? Tak? W głowie się nie kręci? No co? Wodę ta to pije, tak? Ale wodę ta to pije? Wodę ta to pije? No to dobra. No, żeby tato tam też trochę ćwiczył tę nogę, żeby coś żeby coś tam było, nie? Ja jutro, ja jutro gdzieś będę koło 11, 12 już tam nie będę jadł. Ja koło 11, 12 będę z tymi kokretami pić, nie? No, to do zobaczenia. Hej, hej.
Well, a very, very warm welcome to Cross Country Day here in Stragom for leg four of the 2023 FEI Eventing Nations Cup Series. What a brilliant afternoon we have got in store for nations in the lineup for the four-star short nations cup class nine teams on the leaderboard as well we'll kick off the cross country in a couple of moments time with the individual riders before the first of the team riders heads out on course about an hour into the competition and here is our pathfinder sana de Jong for the netherlands comes forward on 35.4 in 26th place coming forward to the cross country and uh, Jersey MBF, the horse that she brings forward, nine-year-old mare, would be uh, a bit of mileage under the horse's belt at this level now. Has uh, been here actually in uh, the four-star short to Stragon previously. And there's plenty of questions out there on Marcin Konofsky's cross-country track. And this is really interesting because this, this is a huge amount of discussion among the riders 10 a b c and d and electing to take the longer route from an early stage it does it very easily and, uh, they then go on the mound And off the mound at the uh, hanging brush. Angled horses, real question of accuracy set by Marcin Konofsky. Get a great shot of the acute angle on them. And interestingly, going on the one stride between those, the two would come up very, very short. Young, who's represented the Netherlands at the uh, top level of competition at championship level and comes forward as the, the anchor for the Dutch team a little bit later on as the afternoon progresses. The Dutch team actually sit in third, 93.0 after the first phase, the dressage, which has been taking place over the last couple of days. Six minutes and 31 seconds, that all important optimum time here. As they come. This is the lotto table, Skinny. This is the combination that's caused plenty of discussion. And just runs out at that really, really narrow brush. The second element was going the direct route, in fact. And now coming round to represent, actually electing to go back to the skinny brush and pops up clear of the corner. And then another of those brushes, look. So 20 penalties for Sana de Jong and uh, Jazzy MBF riding as an individual for the Netherlands. Conditions very, very good. The whole team in Stragom have done a huge amount of work on the ground to make it as good as, as they approach the three minute marker now. Clear of the Monterrey, Sana de Jong. Plenty of riders watching on to get some early indicators as to how it's riding. The Lotto water come up a fairly steep bank and it's a really, really interesting, quite a fairly steep bank and what, well it isn't water, it does rather catch them by surprise amount of water to look at and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that is judged as to whether she was uh, judged to have jumped it clear. We'll let the fence judge report in and we'll keep an eye on the live scores. Down into 
watered than these two big brush corners. Pops through those very neatly. That's the curving line that so goes away from fence 16A and B. So the roll top into water separately numbered to those brush corners. About four minutes into the course now. And Judge just jumping clear into the water. So just carrying 20 penalties from a glance off at uh, 10 a little bit earlier on. You can see just how, what a racetrack this course is. Twisting and turning. Rails into the water, then a curving left-handed line again up the bank on the exit and just rattled the top of it. But the horse was clever with her Nineteen and twenty, these two chests on the curving left-handed line on top of the mounds. Almost quite literally speed bumps. It should be said because you've got to respect them. The cross-country time here in Strogom is unbelievably tough as well. Only three people have made it in the last 12 runnings of the four-star short competitions. Here they run it every single year. So going back to the start of 2021, only three people have stopped the clock inside. The time is going to play a big part today. And with just one rail in the show jumping or 10 seconds cross country covering the podium in the Nations Cup team competition. It will play its part. Did a rip through all three elements of the KGHM angled hedge corner and hedge at 21. Very much a question of accuracy. As, uh, we remind you of that leaderboard after the first phase in the individual competition. Caroline Pamuchku, HSH Blake, 28.1 leads the way. Crazy Carlotta, Joanna Mahler for Germany are at 29.3 in second. Sana de Jong with her second ride in joy of the last to go today, 29.4. She sits in third individually. Here is Sana at the last water. that very nicely. The final fence comes up very quickly after that last water. You've got to really respect it. It's uh, upon you in just nine, ten strides, perhaps. So, Sana de Jong home safely as we uh, go now to Stefan Hazelega and James Bond. 33.9, their starting score just outside the top 20. Stefan also competing in the next Rail to skinny at eight A and B. Pops through there very nicely. We've also got uh, Alessia Pryor and Dollar Boy Nine out it's on course. Sixteen A and B. And James Bond would be one of the early uh, indicators in terms of speed, would be ranked inside the top ten speed horses in the field. Stefan comes to the lotto table skinny and skinny. This is where we saw our pathfinder Sana de Jong have a trouble. And pops through there beautifully. That would give those watching in the rider tent a huge amount. As we go to Alessia Pro and Dollar Boy 9. 39.4, their starting score. Heading in all a minute or so of their uh, cross country round. Back with uh, Stefan Hazelega and James Bond. Such an eye catching horse. And he is not hanging around. Six minutes, that's the optimum time, remember. 3,760 metres the total distance. Draws carefully down into the water. 
two, three. Pops the three strides in there, actually. You could just see Stefan sat really quietly because the horse didn't actually far out over the first element. So he waited for the three and it came up really well for him. Sanad Young, Jersey MBF, uh, stopped the clock eight minutes and 30 seconds, so almost two minutes over the time. They did have that uh, one run out out on course, but I would say even so, they didn't go particularly slowly. So uh, it's an indication that that time is going to be as significant as we think it might. This combination are going to give us a really good indication of that because Stefan not hanging around out on course Sinkonovsky, the uh, course designer here, has done a brilliant, brilliant job. There was plenty of chat around this uh, four-star course in terms of the questions out there. It felt very much it was a, a tough enough track. As James Bond and Stefan Hazelega clear through the DCU rail in and out of the water. Now we turn our attentions to uh, Clever Man Wolf, Julien Despontin. 34.6, their starting score. Julien, who we'll see a little bit later on in the uh, Belgian Nations Cup team as well. As we go now to uh, Mattia Luciani. Verno, 43.2 is their two-phase score, or their first-phase score coming into the competition. Of course, combinations at show jumping tomorrow, which we will have for you live on FEI TV. And again, going the direct route through 10. Mattia and uh, Ferno. Getting a time in for Alessia Proa and a dollar per minute 39, 25.2 time faults. They complete the day on 64.6, but our first clear round. Brilliant to see so many crowds out enjoying all of the competition here. That's up the bank the log drop in. They land on dry land. It's a big enough drop down this line to the angle head houses and just squeezes that third stride in. Before swinging back through the trees to the uh, white parallel rails at 14. And then already very quickly back to the water. The lotto roll top into water at 15. Big fence in. Before setting up for these brush corners. Oh, oh he worked hard. Uh, took the flag with him at the second of those corners. Did a really good job in just making sure the horse didn't lose the right shoulder. As... Uh, Julian de Pontin really nicely through the angled hedges at six. A time in for Stefan Hazelager and uh, James Bond, seven minutes and 13 seconds. That's uh, 14.8 time penalties, 48.7. Sets the early target, but of course, still a very long way to go. Really nicely done through the rail and skinny at eight A and B around the two minute marker for Julien de Pontin. Julien will be the pathfinder for the Belgian team a little bit later on with Honey Blue. Heads out on course at around just before quarter past two Central European time. First of the team riders uh, 
about an hour into the competition, all of the individuals uh, coming forward first of all. And electing to take the left-handed route at 10. Up through it very nicely. Julian. 4.6 the score that he brings forward as uh, having to work pretty hard but uh, getting the job done Matteo Luciani and Ferno through the KGHM angled hedge corner and hedge at 21 The bank. And you can see a few horses have just been a little bit surprised by that. It's a fairly steep bank up, but he makes the two strides in between those hedges look really good. Clever Manoir, 14 years of age, by Claramo. back to the Lotto Water once again. They've had some good results at three star this year, fourth in Cronenberg, and really well done through those brush corners. Of course, that have been top per 10 here previously, actually, this combination in the four star long at Stregom. That was back in 2021. De Pontin comes back to that big table. And then it's another water question for him. They come up pretty thick and fast, these water complexes. The curving left handed line. Both of those rails are on MIM devices. So, should devices be activated? Under international competition rules, uh, 11 penalties will be automatically added. And he keeps moving through both of those chests, so it makes it look very straightforward, really forward riding. Uh, so here we go, go to Cassie and Florentine. Katrin, who will be last to go for uh, the Austrian team as well, with the uh, Oklahoma forward with Florentine on a score of 48.5. 11 year old Matt going the direct route and very very boldly Those skinny triple brush uh, elements at 10. Katrin, who's represented Austria at the highest world championship level. Just actually coming to the Monte Rails there. Again, another uh, mim, set of MIM clips. So you don't want to take on any, any unnecessary risks. Mattia Luciani and uh, Ferno home safely 22 times 65.2. Oh, almost launched herself into the water off the top of the log there. And uh, almost too short. Bags and bags of scope, this map. Behind the mound. Did those white rails. And then back to the lotto water. 
roll top and the brush corners, which have jumped pretty well, actually, at the early part of this uh, four-star short. And strike the curse of the commentator, because they just sail down the left-hand side of the first. And now need to find their way back around. Come round to represent... gets it this time. So 20 penalties for Katrin on Hazrasi. As uh, getting news that Julian Despontin Clevermanoif is home safely. Uh, again, some time penalties to add. 16.4 in total, 51.0. His two-phase score going forward to tomorrow's cross-country but a clear, clear round in terms of jumping. And as we cross country time here is going to really make its mark on the leaderboard. Now we go to a five star winner in Felix Volk. Felix rides KN on a score of 32.5. Extravagant jumping from Florentine. As they go clear of the DCU rail at, in and out of the water at 18. Pops through those chests. Separately numbered chests at 19 and 20. And then this one of the few parts of the course actually that you can open up on the accelerator because only the three jumping efforts in the next minute. As here's Felix Bott, KN. Taking the direct route through PZU rail and corner at four. And this is a horse that he thinks a huge amount of was uh, originally his first choice for uh, Tokyo. The horse had a little bit of an injury, a bit of time on the sidelines, and uh, is a brilliant welcome addition back to his string because he's uh, got some really smart horses. Calera, of course, who won the five star in Le Moulin last year. Cartania, who's been his ride at the European Championships, uh, a very good result at badminton this spring. through those angled brushes very nicely so if you're just tuning in then a very warm welcome to you understand that uh, Katrin Codham has Rati had also picked up a 20 penalties at 8b at the rail and skinny at the skinny this uh, actually this skinny brush that we're just watching Felix Vogue jump through now so uh, they're on two refusals out on course, 20 penalties for each of them at some offences, so it's 40 in total. And they just have the last to go, which they pop very well and safely through the finish. Uh, news coming through that uh, Yoshiaki Iowa, no fear JRA, actually at the draw, so they won't be uh, joining us out on course. Felix Vogue, KN, the lotto combination at 10, going the direct route and pops through that really nicely on the three strides. Felix, who represented Switzerland, not only at uh, two Olympic Games, and also three World Championships or World Equestrian Games, as they uh, were previously, and was actually part of the Swiss team here when the Europeans were held in 17. He's got four European Championship appearances to his name as well. Switzerland, one of those teams that already have Olympic qualification secure. Pop 
walked through the angle that brushes in the Lotto water very, very nicely. KN, 14 years of age. Oh, yeah, careful, owned by Felix alongside Jürgen Vogg and Phoenix Eventing. Winner at the four star long level in Monte Libretti back in 2020. Slightly campaigned in 2021 and then having picked up that injury, we didn't see her in the 2022 season. As uh, away from the start is uh, our sole representative from the Czech Republic this weekend, Mathieu Soukdelak and Quaid, 46.7, combination who were top 10 in Babarusko in the four star long format. Group C qualifier. He come forward with a 46.7 on the card from the first phase. That's Felix Fock. KN. The water very easily. See Felix checking back over his shoulder, perhaps had heard the rattle of the uh, mim clips, rather jangles the nerves when you do hear it. But both stayed, so no need for alarm. Mathieu, Sukdalak and Quaid, who've come through the uh, young rider teams uh, for the Czech Republic. It's Felix Fogg just adjusting something on his saddle there as he heads uh, into the latter part of his round. The three strides actually to that triple brush seems to be riding really well. If you keep moving forward, we've seen it look very, very good. Felix for KM. On the, the most competitive score that we've seen thus far in the competition, 32.5, well on their way towards home. Remember that the individuals competing in the Four Star Nations Cup class coming forward first, so the first rotation of team riders will be due out on course in around half an hour or so. In terms of the individual standings, it is America on top. Caroline Pamuchku, previously Caroline Martin, married new husband Dennis over the winter, is out in front with HSH Blake, 28.1. Crazy Carlotta, Joanna Marla, 29.3 in second. Sana de Jong, enjoy 29.4 in third. It's Germany who lead the team standings, though. As away goes Vera Maninen and Sir Greg for Finland. Doing a really good job through the Lotto water. Mathieu Soukdelac and Quaid and Sophie Home by far the fastest that we have seen, round in six minutes, 56 seconds. So eight time faults in total. That is 20 seconds over the time. The optimum time, six minutes and 36 seconds. Ooh, that uh, didn't make her life totally straightforward. Vera Maninen had an enormous leap over the first element, as that is a prime example of the MIM device activating under force. So Quaid just leaving a leg on the exit of that water, and uh, Mathieu will be awarded 11 penalties for activating that safety device, but it did uh, certainly do its job on that occasion.
really well done, boldly through the combination for, for uh, Ananen. And so Greg. Vera, just 23 years of age, has come through the junior young rider ranks for Finland. And this is the horse actually that she uh, rode to a top 10 finish individually at the Young Rider Europeans back in uh, 2021. 13 years of age, so Greg. in the four-star long format in Sockpot last time out and popped through the angled houses in the water with uh, no trouble. Again, another to find the uh, two strides coming up very easily for them. And we understand a uh, run out a little bit further on for Mathieu Soukdelac and Quaid picking up 20 penalties to add to their 11 penalties at the DCU rail in and out of water at the KGHM angled hedge and corner it was the final element the second of those angled hedges that caught them out as uh, Vera having a really good spin cross country on this horse I'm sure we'll be fancying her chances of a shot at a, a team spot a senior team debut at the European Championships in Harada Pat as a way from the start it is Tosca Brambia and Legoland Moodle swing 41 point coming forward Man and then making a quick work of the chests at 19 and 20. It'd be interesting to see her time actually because she's been motoring across the country. Tosca and a Legoland mood swing by Camiro de Hart. <laughs> Cruising on the downside of uh, this horse, owned by Tosca herself, alongside Rosella Maggie, Francis Bath, and uh, Ice Brambia. And pops again through the direct route of 10. Combination who are top 10 in Monte Libretti at the beginning of this year in the four star long format. Did a very good clear cross country on that occasion completed Bukalo at the back end of last season tooth coat last year as well at the four star long format so plenty of mileage at this level under their belts already Mathieu Souktelac and Quaid home safely, 20 jumping a uh, for the broken device, so 20 for the refusal, 11 for the broken device. Sees them complete on point seven. The uh, leader in the clubhouse is Felix Fogg, KN 40.5 is the target. Still plenty of combinations that can go ahead of them. And I'm sure as the uh, competition really hots up when the team rotation of riders comes forward a little bit later on. Will anybody achieve that all important optimum time? Six minutes, 36 seconds. Watch this space as Tosca Brambia. Corners in the water pops through there really nicely. And we understand actually 
fence 14, which is the white parallel rails that just precedes the water that we've just watched Tosca through. The MIM clip was activated there too, so 11 penalties on Tosca's card. Uh, set back to Martina Kristen, who's our latest crispy. Here's the horse that she brings forward. 40.8, their uh, dressage score. And uh, very careful out over the second of those rails at the water at 18. Martina Kristen, meanwhile, and Crispy 20. At the early part of their round. of a number of Italian combinations competing as an individual. Also a combination at 10. Pops through there really nicely on the direct route. Martina, 26 years of age. Crispy 20, 14 year old by Contendro. Contendro, of course, the sire of uh, Fisher Chipmunk, FRH. Who uh, competes at the very top level with Michael Young would be one of the hot favourites heading into the Paris Olympic Games next year. Oh, and just ducking out the left hand side of the corner at the KGHM angled uh, combination on Tosca Brambia and uh, Legoland Mood Swing will come round to represent as Martina Kristen and Crispy. This horse owned by Scuderia CNG. And the uh, Lotto Water. Oh, very boldly in, and unfortunately just landed right at the bottom of the bank. And gravity took over. Good to see Martina very quickly up on her feet. You can see the air jacket has gone off. And so she'll be a little bit winded, but she says she's okay. You don't need to come and get me out of the water. I'll come to you. She's a brilliant team of medics that are out in Stragon, but hopefully none the worse for wear after that tumble. And uh, I'm sure we'll get a round of applause from the watching crowds down there at the Lotto Water as well. So Martina Kristen and Crispy 20 out of the competition, but brilliant to see her up on her as... Uh, Away goes Martin Boone and Gravin Van Kantos. Now, this, who are one of the early indicators of speed because top five in the fastest horses in the field. And had to be very clever with his footwork at the rail at 8A. And uh, Gravin Van Kantos actually really helped Martin out there, but sometimes that's the way it goes. You need a horse that's willing to dig deep, and as a rider, you help them and they help you. It'll be very interesting to see, because he certainly looks like he's set out meaning business on a competitive starting score as well of 32.1. Martin who uh, we'll see, I'm sure, feature in uh, more Nations Cup competitions as the year progresses. Belgium, led by uh, Kai Stefan Meyer, really focusing their attentions on that uh, team ticket to Paris, which they are yet to secure. that Martin actually rode at Chatsworth in the Nations Cup leg there. Things didn't quite go to plan for them in the show jumping. It's a tough 
an update at the office in the show jumping at Chatsworth, it must be said, because uh, ground conditions pretty tricky. There's been a huge amount of rain in the English spring. But the Belgian team did a super job to then go and uh, finish on the podium, extend their lead at the top of the Nations Cup standings. Good reactive riding from Martin through the water. He rode that drop down actually really nicely because we've seen it just catch one or two out as they come up the hill. As that is Tosca Van Brie at home. Just look to see. Actually had another run out up at 21 and decided to pop a hand up another occasion. So, well, unfortunately their day ends there. Back with Martin Boone. The lotto water really well done through those corners. I was just saying he, he jumped into that water really well because you come up the bank and it's a very small log drop in. And we've seen a couple looking a little bit unsure and spooking slightly at the top, backing off a lot. And then a couple of others have just launched in a bit too boldly and he gave the horse all the time in the world. As our latest starter is uh, Elvira Rosenberg for Sweden. The uh, Seoul Swedish individual combination. As uh, Martin Boone, Gravin van Cantos. The water at 18. Pops through there very nicely. Mira of Vera Maninen round in six minutes and 52 seconds with Sir Greg. They looked pretty quick out on course, 6.4 time. That is the fastest round we've seen so far. They go into second, 42.8, behind uh, Felix Vogg and KN, who've set the early standard. Elvira Rosenberg rides the 12 year old guy. Oh, and you could almost see she felt that her line wasn't quite right coming into the first of those uh, triple brushes. There was a bit of discussion going on between them. And she'll come round to represent now. So 20 penalties and still electing to go direct. And she gets that very well. So, if you are just tuning in, then a very, very warm welcome to Stragom. All drama out on Marcin Konofsky's uh, cross-country track thus far, certainly causing plenty of movement on the leaderboards. Six minutes and 36 seconds is the optimum time. Yet to see anybody go very close to that. Only three people in the last 12 four-star short classes that have run here in short classes every year have uh, achieved the optimum time. Will we see anybody do so today? As here is the individual combination from Italy, Anna Baraka, just uh, out on course. Oh. A little bit of balance coming in and actually just them running into trouble at the first of those angled uh, brushes. And I think she's gonna pop a hand up and call it a day. So. So, uh, Rosenberg and Guy walking home and a very mature decision, obviously feeling things not quite going their way and we'll look forward to seeing them out again next time. Here is Sir Anna Baraka and Exclusive. Got him very close to the first of those horses, but uh, got away with it. Anna actually has the course all to herself at the moment, so uh, our undivided attention, as uh, that image gives you a really good idea as to how they utilise every single inch of the ground here in Stragom. Marston and his team have really developed it over the last few years as well. Eric Winter, who's the technical delegate out here, was chatting to uh, Chris Ryan, the 
there's lots of brilliant videos on the Strigon Facebook page, but he, w he was chatting to Chris about the work that's been done, even in the last 10 years, to, to develop the course. It's become a real mecca for eventing in Poland and, and as Europe as a whole, I would say. And there isn't a, an enormous amount of natural terrain, but actually he's built lots of uh, mounds and banks and he uses them to great effect. As away from the start, it is uh, Adrian Smulders and Ikau as back with Anna Baraka. And at one of a number of Italian individuals competing here in Stragon this weekend. Leg four of the 2023 FEI Venting Nations Cup Series. Lots coming your way over the coming months. The uh, next in the Nations Cup Series is actually Jardy. As another to just land quite steeply coming down into that water. This is a wonderful indication actually of just how acutely angled those two boats are. Oh, in Adrian Smulders and uh, Ikau very quickly out at the early part of their round. That's back with Anna Baraka. And gets the two brushes in the water. Anna, who rode at the 2012 Junior European Championships that were actually held here in Stragon. So I'm sure plenty of wonderful memories. Exclusive for 14 years of age by Viet Vox, owned by Laura Morganacci. actually completed the Nations Cup in Stragom, in Stragom, in Montlebresi, even a little bit earlier on this year. But have had plenty of visits to Stragom previously to up the levels. So just a, a reminder if you're tuning in, in the individual rotation of riders before we turn our attentions to the first of the team riders who will be out on course in around five or six horses time all competing in one competition but of course the team competition separate and big points on the offer this weekend the show jumping taking place tomorrow which we will be showing live for you on FEI TV so we do hope that you'll join us at 2.30 as the provisional start time that is Central European time Adrian Smulders nicely through that combination as here is uh, for India Fred Mertzer and Signor Medicot Adrian Smulders to the Lotto Water. It's in very nicely. Gets a good line to those angled boats and brushes through the top. And then it's a, a quick loop out the water before they come back in again at fence 15. Here's Signor Medicot and Fred Matza. Signor Medicot, who was formerly campaigned by Bettina Hoy of Germany. And 
Patreon. Ooh, was trying to get his line, was working hard for the second of those corners. But actually, horse just ducks out through the right shoulder. And uh, unfortunately does so again. It's very difficult coming back to represent. And actually, shake of the head and um, decides, I think, to uh, save him and the horse for another occasion. So Adrian Smulders has retired out on course, as here is Signor Medicot and Fuad Marza. Fuad, who has really paved the way for eventing in uh, India has been a wonderful ambassador for the sport. Moved over to Germany back in 2017 to train with Bettina Hoy and Warendorf. That was the year that the Europeans were held here, actually, in Stragon. And uh, if memory serves me correctly, Signor Medicot could well have led the dressage at those European Championships, but certainly in a medal position after the first phase. He did, 24.6 in the first phase, quite remarkable, because that is 24.6 in old money before the uh, dressage multiplier was removed. So if you divide that by 1.5, that relates to a 16.4. But Ford has done a wonderful job in actually making the horse his own as well, because it's always difficult when you take on a horse that's uh, at the top level, that's very well known to be able to press all of the right buttons and he really has done that as a way from the start another ride for Sana de Jong comes forward this time with global fairly flashy one of three rides in the field for Sana we'll see her with enjoy in an individual podium position coming forward to the cross country a little bit later Brilliant piece of riding from Fuad Mertzer through the brush corners in the water. As Sana de Jong jumps the uh, hanging log and brush on the mound at five. Looks like one of the Dutch support staff in hot pursuit on a bike. through there very nicely. This is uh, another ride for Alessia Pratt. Ne Next uh, wait, he'll lose uh, on board Gatto Salter Doe. It's a real S bend down here at eight. A and B because you jump the roll top down the hill at seven which while separately numbered is still very much related because you can't afford to wing it at too much you've then got to curve round very steeply to the right and then curve left after the A element down the dip to get the skinny triple brush and we've seen one or two already caught out at that skinny triple brush So just the two combinations out on course at the moment. Anna Baraka exiting safely round in 7 minutes 26. It's over the optimum time. Felix Vogg and KN remain the ones to beat. Forty point four by score at the top of the leaderboard. Of course, tomorrow it is all about the show jumping phase and we'll
will have that coverage for you on FEI TV too. Global fairly flashy was a horse that was uh, formerly campaigned by Brian Morrison of Ireland. Uh, very nearly home. Fuad Mertza and Signor Medicot, who've put in a really good round cross country. Pops through the angled boats on the two strides, and then they just loop up. Round and the spectators to the big white boxer for very quickly coming back into the water. And this is where the accumulative effect out on cross country, each fence individually is obviously difficult, but then you add them together. So how the first time will very much part in how you jump in the second time. Uh, quite close to the first, uh, to the flag on that first element. Alessia Proa clear of the horses' heads at 6A and B. Third Mertzer, Signor Medicot round in 7.05. So he goes into third on the leaderboard, 45.1 his total score for India. Anna de Jong, who we'll see as one of the last to go a little bit later on, currently sitting in individual third place with her championship ride, Enjoy. The Netherlands in third as well on the Nations Cup standings coming in to Stragom this weekend. Italy just ahead of them, Belgium lead. The three strides there has come up really well between those skinny brushes, especially when taken on quite a forward ride. And uh, Alessio already has the benefit of having uh, had a spin around this course once with uh, Dollar Boy 9 a little bit earlier on. Young pops through one of the last big, big questions, the KGHM angled hedge combination. On she's just started yet. Six minutes, 36 seconds, the optimum time. Ooh, just rather jumped, almost jumped a shadow into water there. But uh, enthusiastically done. As... Uh, Sanna de Jong, very nearly home. In fact, home well within her sights as she comes to the final water. Very quickly through there. And then the last fence comes up very, very quickly. And you've got to respect it as well. Let's see a pro up through the water, the Lotto water at 15 and 16. Sanna de Jong is home safely with Global Fairly Flashy as a way on course. So the first of our team riders. So into the Nations Cup team riders now. And it is for Spain. Esteban Benitez via Milana 23. Neatly through the combination at 8A and B. Waiting down at the start is Yannick Bunschka. Champ de Tuller, the pathfinders for the Dutch team. Mm -hmm. 
Cambridge team. We'll come back to in just a second as Alessia Proa heads towards her team on the left. And Milana, 23, is one of their counting scores. 37.4, the score on which they come out of the start box on. team not yet having secured a qualification for the Olympic Games in Paris. Really well done by Gata Soltado, Alessia Proa through the combination at 21. As Milana, 23, 19 years of age. Each now, I'm a doc owned by Esteban alongside uh, oh, just uh, rather found the right hand side of that boat. That the second uh, was going to say co owned alongside Jose Canedo and Gozo. Yannicka Boonskaya underway. ACSI Champ de Tala, the winners of the long format four star in Babarithko a few weeks ago. Very well done. 15 and 16 AB for Esteban and uh, Milana 23. This is the horse that has taken Esteban to uh, two European Championships and a World Championship. It's in ACSI Champs de neatly through the horse's heads. Yannick Boonskaya. On global, fairly, fairly flashy, 7 minutes 33 seconds, so 50 seconds, 7 seconds over the optimum time. At 59.4, their total score. Very well done through the chest at 19 and Benitez via. As ACSI Champ de Tuleur. And yeah. It's a horse that uh, the Dutch team would dearly love to be in the mix for the up upcoming chapter. Had a bit of time off last season, but back with a bang in Babarithko. Nicely done. Esteban Benitez via Big Pats for Milana 23. Two combinations out on course at the moment. They'll be joined in just a moment by the first of the Italian team riders. And Esteban has not been ha hanging around. Really interesting to see his time because uh, quickly into the latter part of his round as ACSI Champs de la really showed his experience there. And into water. And Esteban Benitez via check of the watch as he comes home and uh, is safely through the finish flag. So, what will his time be? Because he is one of the counting scores for the Spanish team. Very well done through the water. Yes, I shump as uh, here is uh, Matteo Luciani taking no chances at the hanging brush log at five.
Yannick Boonschkaya, one of the counting scores for the Dutch team who currently sit in third on the leaderboard, 93.0. And they're actually, after the first phase, ahead of their two biggest competitors in the Nations Cup League, looking for team slots to Paris. Because Belgium, back who, are, who lead the series, back in fifth, and actually Italy in seventh after the first phase. Is Yannick Boonschkaya, very economical line. Clear at uh, 19 and 20. As a time just in, 6 minutes 55 seconds for Esteban Benitez via. And uh, that sees him go into third at the moment. 45.0. As uh, Andrew McConnell, the pathfinder for the uh, very exciting US team, just waiting down at the start. Luciani pops 8A and B. Already seen him have one good round this morning with Ferno in the four star Nations Cup class as an individual. over a third of the way through the competition here and if you are just tuning in then a very very warm welcome to Strogom and to Poland in the southwest of the country as the Nations Cup is in full swing Janneke Boonschkei the first of the Dutch Chaucer safely what will her time be Very well done through the water at 12 and 13. That is uh, Mattia Luciani and uh, uh, Leopold. As uh, very boldly in over the roll top. Got to get their line for these brush corners here that very well. Andrew McConnell is on course, so next to start will be Pontus Hugo for Sweden. This is Andrew McConnell who actually that uh, had a frangible device at 4B, so Ferry's cello 11 penalties to add to their score so far. They came forward on Luciani, Leopold K, chests at 19 and 20. But almost it's like Kine and the mounds there as well. Just mean you can't take any liberties. Andrew McConnell and Ferry's cello make the three strides look really easy actually coming out of 10. Goes the direct route. Andrew, who spent some time over in England, being based with William Fox Pitt been back in the US for a few years now but a really really exciting team of horses uh, Zinfire and uh, Pontus Hugerson is away the first of the Swedish riders job to hold the shoulders in there at the corner and I thought the luck might have run out at the angled brush but he did a really good job and the horse was very honest a 
Lovely piece of riding from Andrew McConnell and Ferry's cello through the water. They were the uh, one of the counting scores for the US team after dressage, but, but the uh, drop score was only marginally behind them. So even though they've picked up that 11 penalties, it's not a disaster for the US team at this stage at all really well done through the water as well you can absolutely see why there is so much excitement over on US soil at the moment as uh, the first of the Italian riders is home safely and uh, Matteo, Matteo Luciani did actually also have a broken device out on course so 11 penalties to add to his score too We've also got a time in for Yannicka Boonskaya and ACSI Champ de Tolleur. 4.8 time penalties. So over the time, 36.5. And uh, that would be a real boost for the Dutch team because she is the leader in the clubhouse at the moment, but it gets them a very, very solid score on the board at this stage. The winners of the Nations Cup here actually 12 months ago were Poland. Poland fielding just three riders here this time. Hugerson. Clear through 8A and B. Another of those teams that have already secured themselves the election. Those slots are being filled up pretty thick and fast now. Only a few of them left. Uh, so away goes Julian Despontin and Honey Blue, the first of the best. Belgian is an important round for them. 33.8 inside the top 20 individually after dressage. Belgium actually on a score of 102.8. In fact, 96.5 after dressage. Sweden just behind them, 102.8. As we go back to the first of their Swedish team riders. Pontus, a bit of a, a social media sensation. Would be a big name. As he comes to the uh, Lotto Water. Bank up to the log drop in. It's a fairly small log into the water, but actually the bank is big enough and steep enough. It just catches the horses a little bit by surprise when they get to the top of it to jump in. And Pontus, a good bit of uh, defensive riding there because he made sure his balance was right back in the saddle. We've seen a few people just be caught out and pitch forward slightly. And he wasn't taking any chances there. So Andrew McConnell is home safely. Uh, did have that broken device at four, but also picked up a, a late 20 penalties too. At 21C, the last of the angled brushes, wasn't a slow time at all, but those jumping penalties means he goes forward on 80.2 to tomorrow. So the uh, US team will be very much hoping that their next three riders can...
and that pounds in the cross country. The next of them that we'll see will be Cassie Sanger out on course very shortly as uh, Pontus Hugerson is in fire. 46.7 their score coming forward to the competition. And uh, also out on course, Julien Despontin, Honey Blue. Julien, the first of the Belgium leading the Nations Cup Series after three legs. They've been on the podium at every leg so far. 270 points ahead of in second on the Nations Cup leaderboard, Italy. And Belgium, well ahead of them, I think Italy, 205. Point. And then uh, the Netherlands in third. All three of those teams that bidding get to Paris. They'll have an opportunity to pick one up. There's two on offer to the highest placed teams at the FEI Eventing Nations, FEI Eventing European Championships in Japan. But also the highest placed team in the Nations Cup standings at the end of the year after the final in Bukalo that is not yet qualified will also pick up a qualifying ticket. Julien Despontin and uh, Honey Blue. Julian comes to the uh, lotto combination at 10. Looks to have gone through there very nicely. As away from the start, it is the first of the Austrian riders, Katrin Kodam Hazrati and Oklahoma 2, 37.3. Good. Catherine, who uh, rode this horse at the World Championships and already had one ride around Martin Konofsky's uh, cross-country track a little bit earlier on, was uh, with Florentine. Uh, just looking at the live scores, Julien Despontin, Honey Blue, at two, two at Broke Course, 18 A and B, that's the rail, into the water, out of the water. So uh, that'll be 22 penalties to add to his total score. Honey Blue coming into the competition, into the cross country, was certainly one of the, the Belgian teams the first rotation of team riders definitely making its mark on the leaderboard both individually and in terms of the team competition Yannick Boonschkaer ACSI Champ de Tuleur is the one to beat remember in terms of the individual standings 36.5 is the score but importantly it was a very very good quick clear round for the Dutch team De Pontin. As here is Catherine Codham has Rati. Moment uh, going into the water where they're just a little bit unbalanced. Julian is at home through the finish. So the first of the Belgian riders is home safe. 22 jumping penalties for two broken devices out on course. Plus, there'll be some time to add as well. We'll give you an update option of riders as to where things stand in the team competition and we've got the first riders all home safely Catherine Codham has Rathi Oklahoma to take the flag at the second of the corners as uh, 
Next away, Paula Aquiza Domingo for Spain, Han Solo Delamore. and just uh, forward on landing in the water that did a good job got the turn as the second of our Spanish riders is away on course pull up a Quinzo Domingo and so below doubles by uh, Qatar de Plopé and by Alfonso Aquiza Echevarren down at the start. It is uh, Merrill Blom, Hulsman and Chinook are about to get underway. The two eight-year-olds in and uh, very exuberant leap. Chinook are 31.9 in 12th after the first phase. So well in touch as well. As soon as we've got Katrin Kodamhazrati home safely, we'll give you an update on those team standings. Because uh, the second of those team riders for Spain, who are part of the Fajan, is away on course. Katrin not hanging around at all with Oklahoma. Actually, well in the mix here. They were on the podium 12 months ago in the Nations Cup here in Stragom. And again, another team bidding a ticket to Paris Games. If you're looking for clarification as to which teams have already picked up their qualifying slots, France as the host nation, Germany, US, New Zealand, Great Britain, Ireland, Sweden and Switzerland, all from the World Championships last year, Poland from the uh, group Seago, uh, Australia and China from Mill Street, as unfortunately Spain have uh, a blow to the 30. Paula unfortunately passing company down into the water and uh, quickly up on her feet and big pats for uh, Han Solo Delamore unfortunately wasn't to be there day to day and uh, good to see him walking home. So uh, balance Chinokar, Merrill Blom Holzman. Merrill, who's been a Dutch national champion previously. A real stalwart of the Dutch team over the years. Waiting down at the start, Pietro Maialino. And uh, Cosmo La Riviera. Chinooka, meanwhile. Well, Merrill, this is a horse that has uh, really impressed coming up the levels but would be relatively inexperienced, it would be fair to say, at the four-star level of competition. They say not, uh, ooh, jumps between the flags at the final element of 10. So horse is only their second run at four-star level for Merrill. But actually, he really showed his great workmanlike attitude, putting in plenty of effort to jump the final part of that combination. Big, scopy horse. And Merrill, who welcomed uh, daughter Philippa. Yeah. Got married as well. Setting up for the Lotto Water. This will be 
Interesting up the bank. Carefully pops down. She actually just swings out to the left to buy herself a little bit more distance for the uh, two boat tour. So she wasn't at all worried about making up that dis distance in a As clear of the combination at four, Pietro Maialino, Cosmo La Riviera, 33.8 in 19th position, coming forwards to the cross country. Meryl Blom Holzman. Brush corners in the water, pops through there very nicely. So, as promised, let's take a look at how the team standings are shaping up. Now we're into the second rotation of team riders. Uh, Germany, who we are yet to see because they have only got three riders, uh, are still out in front because their score remains 7.3. The United States of America have held second place, providing they can uh, not count the score of Andrew McConnell, their first team rider. Uh, 19 three point Austria who've moved up into third and uh, then you have got the Netherlands just dropping behind them 97.8 in fourth but actually the Dutch team counting the first of their riders whereas the Austrian team that would be one of their drop scores then you've got Belgium then you've got Sweden Italy Spain and Poland again Poland only three riders in their team so we but yet, Meryl Blom Holzman and Chinakar, and of the Dutch riders, is a good two thirds of the way around the course. As uh, next away will be the first of the German riders, Vanessa Bolting. Ready, big moment for Vanessa. Actually, she'll be the first of the riders that we see sitting inside the individual top 10. Pietro Maialino is uh, on course with Cosmo La Riviera. Of the first seven, Meryl Blom Holzman. Very, very well, combination at 21. That's cool. Plenty the out. Just getting news in, Pietro Maialino, Cosmo, La Riviera, actually picking up 20 penalties at the second element of eight, the triple brush. So he's got 20 penalties on the card as he goes clear the slightly longer route at 10. Had picked up 20 penalties there as well. So was obviously just then coming round to present for a second attempt. So. Pietro Maialino, two problems on the card for him. 20 penalties for each of them, so 40 jumping penalties. As Meryl Blom Holzman, what a star Chinook R looks to be for the future because uh, only eight years of age and uh, home safely. What will their time be? Six minutes 36, the optimum. We're yet to see anybody go inside it, the fast. Just a guy at Merrill's teammate, 4.8 times, 36.5 is the score to beat. So, ready to go W, Vanessa Bolting at the early pass of their round. Clear through the first four, coming to the angled horses' brushes. Pietro Maialino and uh, Cosmo La Riviera. Vanessa Bolting in seventh, coming into the cross country. 30.1 was a really impressive dressage test from them yesterday. Pietro Maialino. Nope. 
going on towards home. Seven minutes and seven seconds, the time for Meryl Blom Holzman. And, and uh, see, he's then pick up a uh, few time penalties, but a clear jumping round, which is uh, enormously important. And 44.3, she goes into fourth on the leaderboard. That is a very, very strong counting score for the Netherlands. Germany, of course, leading the team. We have three riders. Scores. And a slightly hairy moment at uh, 10. But recovered beautifully. And it should be had clocked on to that final skinny triple brush. Look between the flags. And uh, there was never any doubt. So Vanessa Bolting, ready to go W. Coming to the Lotto Water, as Pietro Maialino is uh, very nearly home. Just a handful of jumping efforts left. Four jumping efforts to be precise as he crosses back over the road. Oh, and that looked to have just been a 20 penalties. And, and Vanessa W looking very into the water and uh, was just too far over to the right-hand side. So 20 penalties to add for the German team, which opens the door for the US. But unfortunately, parting of company, that looks like it was Vanessa Bolting at the uh, parallel that just uh, was after the water. And uh, you can see the air jacket has gone off. She's nodding to the medics who are just asking if she's okay. She'll be checked out. But actually, when the air really knocked the wind out of you. So hopefully just a little bit winded, she'll be checked out, as I say. But actually, that takes the German team out of contention. So all eyes go to the United States. Cassie Sanger the next of their riders out on course. Cassie, just 19 years of age, one of uh, the US's brightest young stars. Good to see the horse walking away there and uh, Vanessa just being helped out of her air jacket as well. So Vanessa Bolting ready to go W. Unfortunately, their day has ended as uh, Cassie Sanger is out on course for the US Pietro Maialino and uh, Cosmo is uh, very nearly home. We'll get an update on them. They've just got a couple of fences left, but Cassie Sanger, Fern Hill Zorro at the Lotto Combination. Really well done through there. Uh, along with her teammates has been a recipient of the uh, Karen E. Stives grant, which uh, has enabled the team to come out. A bit of a development team for the US. Very much the stars of future championship teams for the United States of America. And the team competing here this weekend. Hot favorites coming into the competition, actually, using Echo Ratings uh, predictive analytic technology. They would have been favourites, about 42%, I think. And the team themselves then actually going to head to Arkan next week to go and support their fellow country, who would be one of the hot favourites to take as well. Making it happen to get the two strides between the angled boats. Sang up. Big drop down into the water. And then those brush corners. Looks 
like that went very well for her picture of concentration. She's got her foot on the accelerator as well, it must be said. She's on a very good starting score of 35.5. She is one of the counting scores now for the U.S. team. Fifteen years of age. I've heard as away goes Kaizen, Lena Forsberg. Oh, just caught a leg on the rail at 8A. Pitch Lena forward slightly. She just checks back over her shoulder to check it stayed like it did. As Cassie Sanger through the combination at 18A and B. So, Cassie Sanger at the chests at 19 and 20, sees a lovely shot through there. This young lady giving the horse a peach of a ride so far, as uh, preparing to go under starters orders. Jarno Verwimp, the next rider for Belgium. Lena Forsberg through the combination at eight. Jarno Verwimp, second in Monte Libretti individually, was a huge part of the Belgian team's success on that occasion. That was with Mahalia, who he rides actually in Arken next week. Comes forward today with Kaiba van der Jommerheide. Lena Forsberg and uh, Kaizen, who were top 10. The uh, four star long format two weeks ago. Cassie Sanger back with her. Cassie and Fernhill Zorro looking very, very good as they head towards the final four fences. Lena Forsberg just can step down into the water very nicely through the angle. Cassie making her team debut for the US on a Nations Cup squad. Three fences left between her and the Finnish flags. Oh, just a, a little final element there, but uh, slipped her reins and the horse landed very well. Picks up for the last and is home safe. Please. So, US out in front at the moment. We'll get a time for Cassie Sanger when it comes through, but a very, very good performance for her. Uh, so, here is Jano Verwimp at the angle. Actually, Forsberg, who is up on her feet and reunited, but looks like a parting of company for them. So, unfortunately, their day has ended. Good to see them both looking okay after that tumble but uh, it is uh, unfortunately not the day for them that they would have wanted so they'll both be checked out by the medics and the vets here in Stragom brilliant brilliant team on site and uh, And uh, oh, just ducks out to the right hand side. Oh, he's doing his best to sit tight, tight in the plate. Ducks out, out to the right. Yeah, skinny brush at 10 there. And uh, plenty of drama here in Stragom. Yano will pick up 20 penalties. The first of the uh, Belgian riders had uh, two frangible devices out on course. So Belgium are going to have to count some jumping penalties. we we'll just see this again here, look, at fence 10. So he sets up the right and then slips. He does a day on board. Very quickly back up and running again.
as uh, away goes Robert Mandel, Sacre Coeur, on a score of 29.9, in coming forwards. For Austria, of the fifth, the hanging brush log. So Jano Verwimp and uh, Kaiba van der Jommerheide heading into the final part of their round. Robert Mandel and Sacre Coeur for Austria. He was first, fatal fourth overnight. As just looking for a time for. Uh, Fernhill Zorro and Cassie Sanger. 18.8 time faults, 54.3. So that does drop them down the pit. Run in 7 minutes and 23 seconds. And on the team standings, I am sure, after the second rotation of riders have completed, we'll give you an update on how the leaderboard is looking. And a sacre coeur for Austria, the first of the Austrian combinations was uh, Katrin Kodamhazrati, Oklahoma, who uh, picked up uh, 24.8 time penalties, 62.1 the first of their scores. Uh, done through the water. These white rails actually have caught one or two out just behind the mound today. They deserve uh, real respect and uh, we'll come back to Robert in just a second. Next away from the start, number 36, Saxento, the third of the riders right. Spain, Blanca Garcia Vidal. And actually, Yarnova Wimp looks to have called it a day with Ida. So, uh, had another refusal down at 21, 21C, and had to put the hand up and uh, save themselves for another occasion. So, uh, Belgium down to three counting scores. They've got two riders still to go. is uh, Robert Mandel and uh, Sacre Coeur uh, who called it at the brush corners in the water and it looks all it a day as well having had two problems there so all drama here in Stragon plenty of movement on that leaderboard as we head to first of the riders to head out on course let's just uh, take a look at how things are, are at the though individually the uh, top three we are yet to see out on course hsh blake caroline pamuchku for the united states joanna Motta for germany and sana de jong enjoy for the netherlands they are yet to head out on course the best of those who have been Yannicka boonschkaya acsi champ de at 35 
Away goes the third of the Spanish riders. This is uh, Blanca Garcia Vidal. Sacks. If you were waiting for uh, the first of our Polish riders, Robert Pavala, Castaño, actually they have uh, withdrawn. So actually that means Poland down to two riders, uh, which takes them out of the reckoning in the team competition. In terms of uh, the team standings at the moment, after two riders, it is the Netherlands, 103.9, who lead the way ahead of the United States, 112.4. Spain in third, 0. Austria, 128.5 in fourth. Then Belgium, Sweden, Italy, Poland. So, all movement. This round is an important one. She's kicking on because uh, time penalties are certainly going to be very important. It is Blanca Garcia Vidal, Saxento for Spain. One of the Spanish counting scores. They lost uh, their second rider with a fall in the water in terms of a counting score. So important one for them. 39.6 their score in the first. And uh, nicely through the angled brushes. Six minutes, 36 seconds, the optimum time. Just packs off slightly for the table. It's downhill there. And the horse very clever. With footwork going into the rails. Blanca Garcia Vidal, Saxento, this 15 year old, by Olivero, have had some really good results. As away from the start, it is uh, Stefan Hazelager, the third of the Dutch riders. He comes forward with Gold Rush. The Netherlands, who were on the podium in the Nations Cup here 12 months ago, the ones to beat this time. Saxento, Blanca, Garcia, Vidal for Spain. Go, go, go! So water. Just need to take their time up here. Let the horse have a jolly good look. The horse backs off and has a look. Ooh, rather stuttering at the top of the step. And actually, that will definitely be 20 penalties. So 20 penalties are going to be added for Spain here. She's got to come round to represent. Saxento. Just to have a closer look. Wasn't too short. Jumps it at the second time of asking, but that is going to have even more movement on the Nations Cup leaderboard because Spain were in a podium position. They've now got to count 20 jumping penalties as well. Marcin Konofsky's cross-country track certainly playing its part here. As they go to Stefan Hazelega. Quick check as uh, he jumps through the angled brushes. Saxento 
He is pricked. Covering the ground and just taking a bit of persuading to come back. Pops it really well into the water, very careful, not taking any chances at that rail in and out as well. So the cross country certainly having an impact. Just junior leader in the clubhouse is ACSI Champ de Tuller, Yannicka Bunschgaier, 36.5. Ahead of KN Felix Volk, 40.5. 42.8. Vera Manin and Sir Greg in third. 42.8 so sees the end of the podium, but still a long way to go. And a number of those uh, horses featuring inside the top 10 yet to head out on course. Stefan Hazelega is on track for the Dutch team who've got two very, very good in the bank already. Combination at 21 has certainly caught a few people out, but carefully done over the final element. Saxento. Have a little bit of footwork. towards home just the final four jumping efforts or three jumping efforts I should say very boldly into the final water and then this final fence comes up really really quickly actually after that last water and is home so please they'll probably be a few keys to add as well for Blanca Garcia Vidal and Saxento for Spain. We head into the uh, final rotation of team riders in uh, a couple of minutes' time. Beautiful scenes here in Stragom. You can really see how Martin Konofsky has utilized every single part of the track. The ground conditions very, very good. And it's a really question, this four-star cross-country track. As uh, two combinations out on course. As we understand that actually Stefan Hazelager and Gold Rush have had a passing of company out on, on the flat around fence 14. So uh, we'll bring you more news on that, but unfortunately their day does end. And uh, hopefully both. Uh, Parting of company, we've got Fosco Girardi out as well. Fosco, the third of the Italian team, and he is uh, clear of uh, fence four. Dual standings are, are as for first phase, the top three yet to see them out on course. HSH Blake, Caroline Pamuchku, 28.1, Crazy Carlotta for Germany with 29.3 and Sana de Jong enjoy 29.4 that is the top three individually but then uh, the second of our German team riders Sweetwater Zayeth and Sophie Loeb 29 old young horse world champion is uh, still very very well placed ahead of Jenny Karras and trendy Fernhill but of course 
uh, the first of the German riders unfortunately parting company and as they only had three they do have to count it which rather takes them out of the team standings let's uh, remind ourselves of how the team standings are looking because uh, the Netherlands still out in front at the moment but it is going to be very very close between the final couple of riders for the Netherlands and for the United States 110.2 the Netherlands US 112.4 Austria 128.5 in the podium position so uh, still lots to look forward to as the afternoon progresses we do hope you're enjoying all of the coverage on FEI TV and uh, it takes a, an enormous army of people to be able to make it happen, including a very cool drone, which I think is one of my favorite parts of cross-country footage when you get the opportunity to see everything with a bird's eye view. It gives it an entirely new perspective to the questions being asked out on course. So Fosco Gerardi is clear as he comes to 18A and B. Pops through there very nicely. And the chests at 19 and 20. Them out of his stride. Joanna Marlott and Crazy Carlotta also on course in second after the first phase. 29.3. Has to watch for Germany. They're fine. Fosco and U40 uh, coming to this influential GHM combination at 20. Actually, oh, I thought he popped through there very nicely, but he didn't seem to get the line he wanted for the final element and unfortunately just glances off. So uh, 20 penalties to add for him element of this fence that's been the most influential clears it at the second time of asking but uh, a late 20 penalties for Fosco and for the Italian team crazy Carlotta Joanna Marla on Jenny Carrot Fosco just got the uh, final three jumping efforts remaining as he comes to the last water plenty of opportunities for horses to get their feet wet on this uh, track and he pops through there very well last fence comes up very quickly off to it safely through the finish so Fosco Gerardi and U40 for Italy. And uh, we'll wait news on Joanna Marla and Jenny Karras out on course at the moment. Here is Joanna Marla, crazy Carlotta. Bri Yesterday, 29. And he, she's at the chest at 19 and 20. So they go on to uh, the water 
as away from the start. Yes. The next combination to get their cross-country round underway, Aria Ramkali and Flanders. Daddy score coming forward as we go to Jenny Karras. Jenny and Trendy Fern help. Have had some really good results at the four-star long level of competition. Went very well at Terra Nova a little bit earlier on. And uh, the US team, who was second in dressage, currently sitting second uh, as things stand at the moment. Point four, but hot on the heels of the Netherlands. So a fast clear for Jenny Karras here would certainly put the pressure on uh, the last of the Dutch riders to go, Sanna de Jong and Enjoy. Joanna Carlo Marla and Crazy Carlotta are home safely. She looks absolutely delighted with that round. We'll bring you details on her time as soon as it does come through. But uh, a brilliant performance from the young German rider. Oh, Jenny Karras took one of the widest parts of the brush corner at the second element there. So she is heading towards the big table right out at the far end of the and then she's going to have to turn back. To this water oh, really slipped into the bottom there. But very careful and element as well. Doesn't look to be chasing the clock. Looks to be going for a steady clear round. This could be a tactical move. But you've got to ride what's underneath you. You've got to ride important for the US team to get a good clear on the board Board through the chests very nicely understand that uh, seven minutes and six seconds so 12 time penalties 41.3 for Joanna Mahler and crazy Carlotta as they, as they drop on the line and Aria Ramkali and Flanders unfortunately parting company at six Jenny Karras at the combination at 21 pops through there very nicely. So just the four jumping efforts remaining for the uh, number three rider from the US.
So Danny Karras is home safely as uh, waiting down at the start. The next combination to get their round underway will be Tina Magnus for Belgium. And just a, a momentary hold out on course, Aria Ramkali Flanders passing company at fence six. So Tina Magnus held it down at the start as we wait for that time for Jenny Karras and Trendy Fernhill. Fantastic aerial shots of the uh, wonderful, wonderful sight that we get to enjoy here in Stragom. The venue has held a uh, Nations Cup leg for a number of years. Kai Stefan Meyer there just on the right hand side holding on to uh, Champagne Piazzi and Tina Magnus as they just. Uh, Wait for news as to when that start might be coming. A red light on down at the cross country start. Always nerve wracking moments, but actually Champagne Piazzi looks the most relaxed of the entire team, taking it all in, having a good look around. If you wonder what the uh, piece of equipment is on a horse's nose, that, that's called a flare strip. So essentially, what that does is it helps open up a horse's nasal passage and allows them to breathe more efficiently when they are operating at speed or using a lot of power. So particularly in the show jumping and the cross country phases, that's when you would see that lots and lots and lots of horses wear them. I think 90% of the field in Kentucky this spring had them. And one of those pieces of equipment that actually just help give the horse every opportunity. As we understand, actually, a green light coming on down at the start. You can see Kai Stefan Meyer walking now with uh, Tina Magnus and Champagne PZ, who looked uh, beautifully calm throughout those nervous moments. And just waiting for that score of uh, Trendy Fernhill. And Jenny Karras, because their time yet to be confirmed, but would be a very important one for the US team. Clear jumping, we know that. Kai Stefan Meyer has been really instrumental in spearheading the campaign of the Belgian team this year. It's been a real effort from riders all over the country to pull together they've really targeted this nation's cup series they've had teams at each and every leg and they would be in with a very very good chance one would think of a good result at the european championships too building a lovely string of horses as uh, the crowds here enjoying all of the action in stragon there's uh, lots going on throughout the day. They have a number of other international classes too. A really busy schedule and it is uh, the mecca of eventing in Poland, it should be said. Martin Konofsky and his team do a brilliant job. And he is certainly set a very fair, tough test for the cross country today. Plenty of movement on the leaderboard, both individually and for the uh, team competition. It is the Netherlands who lead the way as things stand at the moment. They still have one rider left to go, Sanna de Jong and Enjoy, who is one of their counting scores. 29.4 in individual third place as well. So a very competitive individual score. 
the United States waiting for that time in for Jenny Karras and Trendy Fernhill. But also they have uh, Caroline Pamuchku and HSH Blake, the individual leaders after the uh, dressage coming forward to the uh, cross country this morning or well, this afternoon, I should say, as here is Tina Magnus, Champagne Piazzi, just having made their final finishing touches, going to be led down towards the start box. This horse who is a big part of the Belgian team plans. And they are away. So Tina Magnus and uh, Champagne Piazzi are on course. 32 years of age, Tina. Champagne Piazzi, 15 year old. By Chablis, owned by uh, Gertz Mason. And a combination that uh, spearheaded a brilliant Belgian win in their Home Nations Cup leg in Arville last year. 30.4 they scored on the dressage on that occasion. And that is a wonderful sight. Good to see walking home after that tumble out on course. Aria Ramkali and Flanders, both horse and rider, up on their feet. And they'll uh, be back another day, I am sure. So here is Tina Magnus at the combination at four. Pops through that. And uh, very quickly on her way. And this bank where the hanging brush log at five is, is one of those really clever places that Martin Konofsky has used sort of man-made terrain to really increase the difficulty and the cross-country aspect to the course. And there's plenty of places just where the fences are situated that actually mean that riders really can't take any chances. They've got to give them that extra little bit of respect. And Tina does exactly that just there through the angled brush horses' heads at 6A and B. Tina Magnus comes forward, remember, on a score of 32.1. So she's well in the mix in this individually too. In 13th after dressage, but we've already seen a good few of those ahead of her have problems. So could move up into a top 10 position. And... Uh, coming to the brush rail. Coming to the lotto combination at 10. This was a fence that caused plenty of discussion amongst the riders. The direct route has ridden really well on the forward three strides. And does so for Tina. Bold attacking riding that. And Champagne Piazzi absolutely motoring. As away goes Dr. Harold Ambrose for Austria. Mount Batten to his championship ride. Austria well in the mix here for a podium in third as things stand at the moment. It would be a brilliant Nations Cup finish for them. But of course, still plenty of competition to bring you tomorrow because the final show jumping phase, which we will have live for you provisionally, the start time half past two Central European time, the conclusion of the competition. Tina Magnus, Champagne, Piazzi. Holds for the three strides actually between those angled boats. Got in quite close to the first of them and so didn't take any chances. 
as Harold Ambrose and uh, Mount Batten, who uh, we've seen on Nations Cup teams for Austria already this season. He's been a real stalwart for Austrian teams at championship level over the years. Tony Magnus, Champagne, Pierre Z, really well done through the brush corners at uh, 16 A and B. And the Belgian team lead the Nations Cup standings at the moment. They've still got uh, two scores to count this afternoon. As uh, we're just getting in a time for Trendy Fernhill and Jenny Karras. We'll update you with that because it actually drops the US team a little bit down the order. Uh, 21.6 time penalties, so uh, 51.6 their total score. As away from the start goes Alicia Trapilo and Karasina for Poland. Champagne PRZ. Tina Magnus, the chests at 19 and 20. Very nicely done. This is an economical round so far. And uh, Champagne PSZ absolutely flying as uh, Tina opens up on that accelerator. Still got plenty of jumping efforts left, though. Can't take any chances as she passes behind the Lotto Pond. As Alicia Tropilo at the combination at four. Very boldly and quickly through there, Karasina. The horse that she brings forwards. This... Uh, an 11-year-old mare by Caruzzi. And not the most comfortable of jumps at five at that big brush hanging log, but they're clear as Tina Magnus, the third of the Belgian riders. Their anchor will be uh, Karen Donkers comes to the final combination. Really well done. Tina Magnus, Champagne PSZ is, uh, I think, going to put herself well in the reckoning here. What a superb round from this young lady. So exciting for the Belgium team. Champagne PSZ will wait for a time in for Tina Magnus, but 32.1 was the score on which she started. And it is a clear jumping round for the Belgian team which having their first two horses had a few problems out on course, very much needed. So back with Harold Ambrose, Mountbatten too. Missed the horse that he rode at the World Championships in Protoni last year. Rather felt his way over the first of the rails at 18. And the second, but both stay, and that's the important part. As... Uh, Looks like Karasina and Alicia Trapilo have run into difficulty at fence six. So that is the first of the angled hedges. And actually three refusals does mean, unfortunately, eliminated from the competition. And they are walking home. So heading into the final rotation of team riders in just a moment. As the third Austrian combination out on course. Dr. Harold Ambrose. And uh, Mountbatten too. Going to the combination at 21. We'll take stock of the team competition in just a moment when we get Harold home as well as we go to the final fourth riders for each of the nations but he pops through that like a schooling exercise at home. Mountbatten 2 still looking full of running. 
As away goes, Gonzalo Blasco Botin for Spain, Marlango de Pomez. Oh, slightly uncomfortable jump at fence five. But uh, they clear it. Rattling their way over the first element of the final water. Now just the last to go. Harold Ambrose taking no chances. Very sensibly takes a pull to the last. And Mountbatten too finishes full of running. That is a, a really important round for Austria, who are well in the mix of finishing on the podium here this weekend. Van Helsing P, Leah Siegel, still to come for the Austrian team. As it looks like problems for uh, Spain or is he just taking a very very lengthy long route we'll wait for the official scoreboards to come in but I think it's going to be 20 penalties for Gonzalo Blasco Botan we didn't see what happened initially as uh, so here comes uh, Sana de Jong enjoy the final rider for the Dutch team this is a big round because the Netherlands in the driving seat in the team competition and they're relying on this performance as well 29.4 and an individual podium position too and that is confirmed Gonzalo Blasco Botin did pick up 20 penalties at eight so we did catch him just uh, taking the uh, long route on his representation to the fence. But if you're just joining us here in Stragom, then a very, very warm welcome to you. We're in the final rotation of team riders in this enormously exciting Nations Cup competition. And Martin Konofsky's cross-country course certainly causing plenty of movement on the leaderboard. So we'll be expecting a few more thrills and spills as the class uh, reaches its climax. And of course, we'll be back tomorrow for the final show jumping phase. The horses will all have to pass a horse inspection in the morning in front of the ground jury of Nick Burton and Katharina Konoska make sure that they are fit well and happy to continue on with the competition Sana de Jong enjoy her world championship ride from last year a third of Sana's three rides out on course as well she actually had a couple of spins a little bit earlier on pops very nicely through the combination at eight that's Gonzalo. Big brush corners. Oh, just scrambled over the second of those. But uh, is clear. Hugely a vocal, enthusiastic crowd here. Enjoying all of the competition. Lots of other international classes going on this weekend as well. And Jong and Enjoy very boldly through the horse, showing all of uh, the experience there. Actually, this mare, 14 years of age, by Cartano, owned by Sanna alongside Yantian Van Zon. As Gonzalo safely puts the uh, Third of four waters behind him. You definitely don't want a horse that doesn't like water on this track. As Sanna de Jong very quickly with Enjoy coming to the first of those. Up the bank. Carefully steps down again, just scooping out to the left hand side, just buys that little bit more space for the angled boats in the water.
As away goes the final Italian combination, Emiliano Portale, Scuderia 1918 Future, horse that was produced up to this level by Pietro Grandis. Emiliano took on the ride for this season and they've had uh, some good success, including a top 10 at four-star long formats. Sanna de Jong. Very, very well done through the uh, brush corn accommodation in the main water. As Emiliano Portale. And Scuderia 1918 future. This accommodation that uh, I would expect we are likely to see at the uh, European Championships in Haradapan for Italy. Italy, of course, one of those teams still bidding for a uh, team slot in Paris. Gonzalo. Blasco Botin, Marlango de Pomers clear the last and are home safely for Spain. Just carrying those 20 penalties from the problem that they had at 8B. But, uh, safely through the finish and we'll bring you details of their time as it comes through to us. Sana de Jong, enjoy the anchor rider for the Dutch team who are in the driving seat here. Emiliano Portale and Scuderia 1918 future. Quickly clear of the combination at eight. Sana de Jong, enjoy. Coming to this combination at 21. And pops through there very, very easily. So kicking towards home. This looks like it's been a really fast round as well. The Dutch have absolutely shown their class out on the cross country today. They've been consistent at each of the legs in the series so far. But a podium finish here would certainly put them in great contention as Sophie Loib and Sweetwater Zyathan absolutely grind to a halt in front of fence five. Sweetwater Zyathan just put the brakes on and uh, Sophie did well to stay on board. Emiliano Portale just pitched forward slightly on landing but recovered really well and uh, actually got the job done. Sweetwater Zyathan I think is saying no thank you to the brush at five. I'm not sure if uh, Sophie is going to come round to represent but Sana de Jong enjoy is home. What uh, will her time look like for the Dutch team? Well one thing I think we can say is that the Dutch will be in the driving seat going into tomorrow's show jumping phase We'll wait for Sana's uh, score to come through in just a second, but it is going to be a very impressive performance from the uh, Netherlands today. They were on the podium here 12 months ago. Sweetwater Zyathan is uh, back up and running after two refusals. Uh, 6.4 time penalties for Sana de Jong. Enjoy. She goes ahead of teammate Yannicka Boonschkaya, ACSI, Champ de Tulleur. And is the one to beat at the moment. 35.8 out in front. Sweetwater Zyathan, Sophie Loib. Of course, wouldn't be experienced at all at this level. Was the seven-year-old young horse world champion a couple of years ago. Sophia, a Bukolo winner, has that wonderful partnership with Jadon Moi. As away goes the overnight leader, Caroline Pamuchku and HSH Blake, a horse who finished inside the top 10 individually at the World Championships for Young Horses last year at Lillian Danger. This is by far their biggest test to date, but one of the most exciting young horses in the United States. 
Sophie Lloyd, Sweetwater Zyathan. Lovely. Through the combination at eight. So, just to uh, take stock of the uh, competition as it stands, Emiliano Portale, the last of the Italian riders, actually news just coming through that he picked up 20 penalties at 21C. That's the uh, second of those angled brushes. So that is going to uh, prove expensive for them. I think the Italian team will be... Uh, Rather cursing Fence 21 because uh, it's certainly been influential on their team scorecard. But uh, Emiliano Portale is home safely. So, Caroline Martin is on course, but we are back with Sophie Loeb and Sweetwater Zyathan carefully dropping down into the water. There's a lot to look at at the top of that bank. Ooh, very bold over the first of those angled boats. This is uh, Caroline HSH Blake, who has impressed so much coming up the levels as a young horse, as a six-year-old and as a seven-year-old. Only an eight-year-old, one of two eight-year-olds in the field. Only a second run at the four-star level. Went to a Terra Nova. At the end of March and had a good advanced run in Tryon but really well done through the water for uh, Sophie Loeb and Sweetwater Zyathan. Sweetwater Zyathan in, uh, was in a very good position after dressage, but picked up that uh, two refusals at fence five actually been a fence that's caught anyone else out today you do the ground really does slope away on landing and uh, an exercise oh oh unfortunately stopping going into the water at 18 as well so that will be their third refusal out on course so unfortunately that does end the day of Sophie Loeb Sweetwater Zyathan as uh, Frida Anderson is away Stonehaven's Baby Blue 36.0 their score coming forward to the angled horses heads Caroline Blake our leader overnight remember out on course with uh, HSH uh, Blake Caroline Pamucci previously Caroline Martin got married husband Dennis out there supporting her this weekend Frida Anderson, the final Swedish team rider, pops through the combination at eight with no trouble. As that is unfortunately Sophie Loeb and uh, Sweetwater Zyathan walking home after three cumulative refusals out on course. So heading towards the end of the competition here, but it is all still to play for at the top of the table because. Uh, Plenty who could go into tomorrow out in front. The final show jumping phase. Here's Karen Donkers and Leapheimer Van de Verhoff. 30.6. They were 10th after dressage. But could actually move up into a podium position with a fast clear hit. Frida Anderson. And Stonehaven's Baby Blue having a good run so far. Caroline Pamuchku and HSH Blake would be just at the third of the four waters, the two rails. Frida. Now here's Caroline coming to this influential combination at 21. Over the first two elements. I guess a good shot at the last one as well. Caroline, four jumping efforts remaining. And uh, what a boost it would be to the US team who've had some mixed fortunes out there on cross country today. It's 
been a huge learning experience for a young team out here, but my goodness, will they have learned from it. And so much to look forward to for the future. Karen Donkers, Liepheimer van der Verhoff, clear of five. Frida Anderson, Frida, who uh, many of you may know her best for that wonderful partnership with Box Leo. Boldly into the water at 15. And gets both of those brush corners at the first time of asking. Caroline Pamuchku and uh, HSH Blake is home. It's a clear round. What does her time look like? She can afford to have a few time penalties to go ahead of the clubhouse leader, which is uh, Enjoy Sana de Jong. But the big question is, how many has she got? She could afford to be 18, 19 seconds over the time. We'll wait for that score to be confirmed because uh, Caroline Pamuchku, HSH Blake, what a horse this looks for the future. Home with a clear jumping round. Frida Anderson. Nicely done that. I was just waiting for news of Caroline Martin's time. My goodness, she could afford 7.6 time penalties. She has 7.6 time penalties, 35.7. Sneaks out uh, ahead of Sana de Jong and enjoy. HSH Blake, Caroline Pamuchku is the one to beat. A couple of people still can beat her because uh, those time penalties cross country have just opened up a window of opportunity one for this lady, Karen Donkers, Liepheimer van der Verhoff, 30.6, Karen score. As Frida Anderson at 21, pops through there very well. So Karen Donkers, as she comes to the Lotto Water, let's. Uh, she is 5.1 penalties ahead of HSH Blake. That means she can be 12 seconds over the time to go ahead of Caroline going into show jumping. Nothing more. We've also got this young lady, Leah Siegel, and uh, Van Helsing P, the horse that she rode at the European Championships in Avanche, and. Let me tell you, Leah Siegel is a very speedy cross-country rider. Van Helsing Peace certainly one to be going out to give it a go. Big Pats for uh, Frida Anderson's uh, Stonehaven's Baby Blue. Really good performance from them in the cross-country. And... Uh, We'll give you an update on their time as soon as it does come through. It is uh, the Netherlands in the driving seat of the Nations Cup. 116.6 there, team score overnight. There will be some way clear of uh, either Austria or the United States of America because Austria have just potentially moved up into second. The United States of America... Uh, with Caroline Blake's, uh, with Caroline Pamuchku and HSH Blake's time penalties, will uh, be in a podium position. But the question is which one? Because Austria 140.9, the US 141.6, but Austria still have Leah Siegel out on course. So they won't be able to afford too many time penalties there at all. In fact, Leah Siegel could only be one second over the time, and that is it to hold Austria in second position. Here is uh, our latest starter. It is our last to go for Poland. Julia Gelmer, Red Dream Princess. That's Karen Donkers at the 
influential combination at 21 pops through there very, very easily. I mean, she is such an experienced competitor. And this is a big round for the Belgian team as well because uh, they absolutely want to be picking up good series points here. Leah Siegel. And uh, Van Helsing P. Oh, not the easiest of jumps at the second of those brush corners, but she gets away with it. Very quickly clear of the angled brushes at 6A and B for Julia Gilmer. So in terms of uh, the competition, the clubhouse leader guaranteed to be third or better heading into the show jumping is HSH Blake, Caroline Pamuchku as uh, somehow making the turn there. Red Dream Princess Julia Gilmer a little bit wider line than they would have uh, perhaps walked. Karen Donkers is home for the Belgian team. That's a big relief for them. Leapheimer van Tverhoff will wait for time to come in. I would imagine there will be some time penalties to add here. So we'll uh, count how many in just a second. Leah Siegel, just 23 years of age, but already so much experience. Has that wonderful partnership with DSP Fighting Line, who will be uh, campaigned out in Arken next week for the SAP Cup, which you'll be able to watch live on uh, Clip by Horse. Yulia and Red Dream Princess on a score of 35.8. Nicely through the water that. So Karen Donkers, seven minutes and seven seconds will give her a good handful of time penalties. 9.2, 45.2. She will be no worse than 14th overnight, but it is a good score for the Belgian team. And it does open up a little bit of a window between them and a podium position, but it's a good solid cross-country board score on the board that keeps them ahead of Spain. So at the moment, the team competition, Netherlands, Austria, the US, Belgium, Spain are the top five. But there's one lady out on course in Leah Siegel and Van Helsing P who can really influence that. Red Prince's dream through the combination in the water. Here is Leah Siegel coming towards home. Just the final fence to go. She's not taking any chances. She pops it very well. She kicks on through the finish and she is home safely. Quick check of the watch. Is it going to be Austria on top of the individual leaderboard or is it going to be the United States of America? Because Caroline Pamuchku on a score of 35.7. And uh, Leah Siegel, just having completed with Van Helsing, could afford to be 14 seconds over the time to hold the individual lead overnight. She could only afford to be one second over the time for Austria to stay ahead of the United States in second in the Nations Cup. Julia Gilmer making the turn back towards the water at 18. Does a good job to get the turn in there. Right, let's get the time for Leah Siegel. Round in six minutes, 44 seconds, 3.2 time, the fastest of the day. She will be our overnight leader. 33.3, Leah Siegel, Van Helsing P, go ahead of Caroline Pamuchku, HSH Blake, 35.7. Yulia could actually go into third with a fast clear here. She's got to go inside the time because uh, she's on the same score as Sana de Jong, enjoy 35.8. So can't afford any time penalties, would be the first to do so if she can stop the clock inside. We'll uh, give you an update on that team scoreboard as well because the Netherlands, 116.6. They will be our overnight leaders with a firm buffer ahead of the United States of America, 141.6 in second. 
Austria, Leah Siegel's brilliant cross-country round that just drops them, or I should say, moves them up to third because actually they've moved up a good few places after dressage. So while it does just drop them below the United States because she had a couple of time penalties, actually they've really climbed the leaderboard to date and a brilliant performance from their team riders. Belgium in fourth, 155.7, a little way back to Spain in fifth. Italy in sixth. But still have this lady to get home safely. It is Julia Gilmar, Red Dream Princess, who is coming towards the end of her round. And it could be a round that features inside the uh, top 10 as well. This final water, the fourth of the four waters. Just the last to go. And pops it very well through the finish flag. So the last horse is home safely. Julia Gilmar, Red Dream Princess for Poland, who unfortunately, after the withdrawal of their first team rider, uh, weren't able to uh, field uh, all four riders in the first place, so had to count a withdrawal before the cross-country, which was very expensive for them. But it's been a very, very good cross-country round from this young lady, and Red Dream Princess is home safely. So we'll just remind you of the team scores overnight. Uh, the Netherlands, 116.6. The United States of America in the silver medal position, 141.6. But not even a fence in hand of Austria in third, 144.1. Belgium, fourth, 155.7. Then it is Spain, Italy, Sweden, Germany and Poland. The team competition is absolutely red hot. The Netherlands would dearly love to pick up serious points, 100 points for winning the Nations Cup leg here this weekend. And uh, there look to be some really exciting combinations for the future for them as well. The individual leaderboard, it is Austria's Leah Siegel, Van Helsing P out in front, 33.3. Caroline Pamuchko, our dressage leader, just drops into second with a few time penalties on the eight-year-old HSH Blake, 35.7. Sana de Jong and Joy for the Netherlands in third, 35.8. Ahead of teammate ACSI, Champ de Tuleur and Yannicka Boonschgaard, 36.5 in fourth. Uh, Felix Vogt, KN, 40.5 in fifth. So that is the top five, but there is still all to play for tomorrow as the fourth leg of the 2023 FEI Eventing Nations Cup Series concludes here in Stragom. We do hope that you will join us because we are in for an absolute thriller, I am sure. 2.30 is the provisional start time, Central European time for the final show jumping phase. It's been an afternoon full of thrills and spills on the cross country. We do hope that you'll join us again tomorrow.